that city volunteers continue to help the needy in Chile with reclaimed computers. We take a look at how the victims of the 2014 Kaohsiung gas explosions were compensated for their loss. Welcome to Star Headlines, I'm Mary Lee, thank you for joining us. Following the April earthquake that damaged Bagasori Higher Secondary School in Nepal, city volunteers helped build prefab classrooms on behalf of the school. Now that the students can study in safety, volunteers have been sharing Jinx aphorisms with the school's teachers. But first, let's look at how the volunteers are building prefab classrooms at Zing Secondary School in Lalitpur District. <laughs> At Zin Secondary School, the April earthquake damaged three classrooms. Since then, students have been sharing classrooms and even using the principal's office for class. After end of the earthquake, and we are very afraid. And after end two or three days, and we have to think now. And it is better to run and classes. City volunteers assess the damage as they plan to build five prefab classrooms here. Upon hearing the news, students pitch in to help out. Sugar canes and bamboos were planted in this area, knowing we want to build classrooms here. The students came together to clear the ground. This is primary. You need by City volunteers work around the clock to finish the prefab classrooms in just a week. At Bajiswari College, the city volunteers brought a little joy to the classrooms with their singing and dancing. Even the teachers found themselves smiling. Enjoy in this session, oh, enjoy. But I like the dance of Taiwan, you know. The teachers were amazed to learn that each of the volunteers' hand gestures had a meaning. Some captured a moment with their cell phones. Everyone raised their arms as they follow along with the volunteers. Today, I, I gain many more knowledge how to teach, how to teach in the, our classroom. We should not be angry, angry, angry. We should not behave our our children, children too. Actually, we wanted to see the teaching modalities that you have been following over there. Yes. Here also, we have been practicing, right? But uh, in spite of our hard work, especially expect some psychological treatment. <laughs> Volunteers also shared a section of Jingzi aphorisms with the teachers to provide them with a source of spiritual support in the days ahead. A simple song and dance, it's called... City volunteers have created a cycle of love at the school and a ripple of compassion that was spread out to the hearts of students. As City's aid in Nepal continues, City volunteers have been passing on their experience to local volunteers. However, are the local volunteers ready for the passing of the torch? City volunteer Li Lihua has accepted an apprentice, Sanjay Awo, who currently helps with translation and home visitations. She was saying that uh to make report, uh, we have to uh, go and see the see the person, the victims, and take all the details about their family status, financial status, and all the things. Sanjay quickly learned the essence of caring for quake victims in tent communities. Come, I think not to worry. Yeah. <laughs> A young man worries for his hospitalized mother, who has kidney stones. To help pay for her surgery, Tsuji has given the family 255 U.S. dollars. So how did Sanjay do on this mission? He's a fast learner. After two days of visitations, he now records all the information we need. He jotted down the main points of our visits. 
As Nepal struggles to rebuild, the efforts of local volunteers are crucial. By carrying out charity work, Nepalese volunteers are helping Tsuji, their fellow countrymen, and themselves. While Chile is one of South America's most stable and prosperous nations, there remains a percentage of Chileans who live below the poverty line. And throughout the years, city volunteers have continued to the best they can to bring care to the disadvantaged and help the impoverished break free from the shackles of poverty. <laughs> Clapping and moving to the beat of the music, Tsuji volunteers let their hair down as they dance in front of 105 children. Tsuji volunteers have been bringing their love to children of the Cerebral Palsy Center for five years now. The floor-to-ceiling windows at the back of the room were installed by Tsuji volunteers a few years ago. And this time around, volunteers managed to collect some 2,000 US dollars with which they plan to buy a heater for the home. City volunteers also brought 10 second-hand computers, which are still in perfect working condition for residents of Campamento San Francisco in San Bernardo. For many, this was a dream come true. We have been saving up for two years now, but we never managed to collect enough to purchase computers for the community. The computers you volunteers brought us are not just pieces of equipment. It means a whole lot to the families here. Although city volunteers in Chile are limited in number and resources, they always try their best to provide for the poor and disadvantaged, and their care over the years is helping residents take one step closer to breaking free from the cycle of poverty. Looking for a way to relieve his mother's osteoarthritis, Ma Shenling's online research brought him to Holland City Hospital and its famed orthopedic team, led by Honorary Superintendent Chen Yinghe. And in just 10 short days, Ma's mother was able to begin living a life where walking was no longer difficult. A resident of Sandong, China, Grandmother Sun, who was 78 this year, has been troubled by her osteoarthritis for the past 30 years. But within the last year or so, the pain became unbearable. Before the surgery, I didn't move around much. If I did walk, I use a cane to help. Otherwise, I just drag my leg while walking. The joints have been rounded out. It's entirely flat. As you can see, knee joints normally have grooves. To relieve his mother of further discomfort, Ma Shengling first researched what hospital could help his mother. His internet research directed him to Hualien City Hospital. I have confidence in Superintendent Chen. I have seen recommendations for him on the internet. I told my mother, you are in good hands here. If you don't feel confident here, then there isn't anywhere else better. We fully trust Ziji's medical team. In 2003, Hualien City Hospital's Chen Yinghe adopted a new minimal invasive surgical procedure for artificial knee replacement, as well as developing patented surgical equipment that won recognition from the National New Invention Award. We're very grateful that they chose our hospital to have their surgery. Our medical team specializes in minimally invasive knee replacement surgery. Our surgical instruments and our innovative medical skills have been recognized nationally. Meeting or exceeding international medical standards, the experienced orthopedic medical team of Hualien City Hospital continues to relieve patients of their pain. Today marks the one-year anniversary of the 2014 Kaohsiung gas explosions. As you might remember, a gas leak led to a series of explosions that destroyed six kilometers of roadways in Kaohsiung on this day one year ago, killing 32 people and injuring 321 others. We now investigate how the approximately 148 million U.S. dollars in donations was used and the life of the victims one year later. Some of the 
products inside Mrs. Chen's glasses shop were severely damaged on that fateful evening, and she has yet to be compensated. In terms of proving their financial loss, it is more difficult. To date, 400 shops still have not been compensated for their loss. Some can only borrow from the banks to restart their business. However, the number of shoppers that used to frequent the area has fallen drastically. Some people are afraid of coming here. An old customer of mine didn't want to come here, so I had to meet up with him elsewhere. Passers-by don't want to come shop here because they know nine people died around here, so they feel uncomfortable. Mr. Zhang runs a motorcycle shop here. Though he and his family survived the explosions, they had to deal with the aftermath, including an outbreak of dengue fever. The accident led to an outbreak of dengue fever. My father died some two weeks after the explosions because of it. The chairman of the Victims' Association, Chen Guanrong, knows well the suffering of the victims, for he himself lost his beloved father to the blast. Whenever I dream about my father, I'm depressed after I wake up. All those beautiful times together can now only be found in dreams. Guangrong's dad was a borough magistrate for six consecutive terms. He inherited his dad's passion to serve and thus put his job as a doctor at a major hospital in Taipei to work in a local clinic so he may serve the locals in his neighborhood, just like his dad. If it wasn't for my dad, I doubt I would have taken on this responsibility. The deputy chairman of the Victims' Association also suffered a grave loss in the tragedy. After holding his beloved wife and son's seventh-day memorial service, Wang Zhongchen then celebrated Father's Day alone. One week later, he would reopen his ramen shop. There are too many memories of my wife and son here, in this shop. I dare not eat here on my own. After hearing about his story, I come here more often to show my support. After the tragedy, about 148 million U.S. dollars in donations poured in to help the victims. Every deceased person's next of kin received 316,000 U.S. dollars in compensation while every seriously injured victim now receives 5,800 U.S. dollars. Also, LCY Chemical, the China General Terminal and Distribution Corporation, and Kaohsiung City Government are to pay additional 387,000 U.S. dollars in compensation for every deceased. In spite of it all, one thing was forgotten, which was to provide counseling for us survivors, because later we all displayed symptoms of PTSD. Though scarred by the accident, blast victims want to donate to build a burn center to help those who suffer from burn injuries. May we all learn from this costly tragedy, so the sacrifice of the victims and those who perished will not be in vain. A number painted on this iron shutter of this closed storefront still denotes the numbers of deceased here. Now one year after the tragedy, half Taiwanese decided what they are going to do so that they and future generations can live in an environment free of petrochemical pipelines and harmful chemicals. Following the Body Water Park explosion, parents of the injured have been under immense emotional stress as they watch their loved ones fight for their life and ponder the challenges their children will face in the future. In response, Taiwan's Ministry of Health and Welfare has instituted training in psychological first aid so that volunteers and medical personnel can be better equipped to help family members deal with the emotional scars following such disasters. One of the hundreds of Bali Water Park explosion victims, Zhen Pingxuan, has recovered enough to finally start rehab. My daughter's condition has stabilized. She is now out of danger and starting rehab. We can finally relax a bit. Even though Pingxuan will be discharged in two days, she still has a long road to walk. 
I need to work on stretching out my foot and getting some strength back in my hands. Pingxuan's quicker than expected recovery was due in part to the support of her family and friends as well as a positive state of mind. Right at the beginning, I told her that her skin would be different than it was before. Maybe these scars in the future can be lessened through surgery. Regardless, if people want to stare, I will just ignore them. Many of the disaster victims are still in the ICU fighting for their lives. One father who personally dragged his daughter out of the flames still has flashbacks of that tragic day. Every day I remember how people were burning as they were running away from the flames. It makes me so sad, not only for my daughter, but for all those that were there. When you tell me it has been a month, it is only then that I realize how long it has been. It's like a long nightmare. The day passed, but my only focus is on my child and her improvement. She once apologized for going, but my response was that it was my fault. I was the one that was not able to protect her. I was the one that let her go to that place. Stunned, regretful, angry, family members of the victims will likely cycle through all these emotions. Experts say such reactions are normal after a disaster like this. However, there is a pressing need for health professionals in Taiwan to pull resources as they look to help families face the trials ahead. After this month, we hope to highlight several important points and then look to see how these areas have been handled internationally. We'll then see what kind of projects can be established here in Taiwan. Following the 91 earthquake in Taiwan, health experts introduced a publication from the U.S. called Disaster Response and Recovery, a handbook for mental health professionals. Published by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the publication stressed the need for proactive care and professional training for a new branch of mental health professionals. In helping these disaster victims, we're not talking about medically trained doctors or nurses or psychiatrists and therapists, but people who know the basics of what we're calling psychological first aid. Currently, Taiwan's Ministry of Health and Welfare is holding psychological first aid training, while private mental health organizations are pooling resources so to better accompany the victims and their families on their long road of recovery. My daughter is alive and well, and for that I'm lucky. If I have the energy, I will do my best to encourage others. That is important. Mental health experts hope that in the future, Taiwan will have a disaster psychological rehabilitation system up and running when and wherever the next disaster strikes. Never Give Up is Da Ai's newest drama. The story tells the life story of polio sufferer Li Jinping, who continued to look on the bright side of life despite her own shortcomings. Li realized that, though she may walk slower than others, as long as she persists, she will reach her destination just like everyone else. As a young girl, Li Jinping dreamed of being able to run or do ballet like other children her age. Despite suffering from polio, Li always looked on the bright side of life, and her inspiring story was made into the latest Zai drama, Never Give Up. I used to be ashamed of my legs, but after joining Tsuji, I came to realize that I can inspire others with my story. I have found my purpose in life. With her family by her side, Li Jinping often looked on the positive side of life. So much so that she was able to encourage her brother, who lost his arm in a car accident, to be strong and leave his sadness behind. Playing the role of Li Jinping is Zhang Jingzhi, a young actor who depicted perfectly the struggles of a person with polio. I was really influenced by Sister Jinping. She was not dragged down spiritually by her physical disability. Instead, she worked hard and managed to inspire so many people. Master Chen Yan often asks us to keep the Jingzi aphorisms in our hearts. In our drama, the actors are essentially acting out Jingzi aphorisms.
Born in the countryside of Taichung, Taiwan, Li Xinping didn't let her disability get her down, but instead rose above it to help change others for the better with her determination and positive attitude. In Taiwan, we lifting coach Yang Fengtian hoped to help children from disadvantaged families gain character and a sense of stability. Thus, he began a weightlifting club at Tainan Municipal Danei Junior High School. However, without subsidies in place, the coach often had to take out loans to help pay for competition entrance fees. This year, the athlete students wanted to help raise the funds. These students are all weightlifters, but they have temporarily left their training to learn how to bake. In the past, the coach would come up with a feast for us, but now we're doing it ourselves. The sense of accomplishment feels different now that we are earning the competition fees ourselves. The observatory at the Tainan Science Education Museum holds an avocado festival each year. We thought we could sell avocado pastries, and we asked the bakery owner to teach us. These athletes put their heart and soul into learning how to bake these desserts. Surrounded by the hot ovens, the students experience the difficulties of this profession. This job is the same. You have to do it every day. It's also very tiring. By teaching them other skill sets, besides weightlifting, this gives them another way to make a living. The student athletes work hard to show the bakery owner and their coach that they are capable of being successful as long as they put their hearts into it. <laughs> Meanwhile, coach Chen Han Tong sees herself in these junior high students when she was their age. I didn't fail in life. Instead, I changed for the better and returned to help these children. I'm just giving back to the weightlifting sport all that it has taught me. The person who changed Chen was Yang Fengtian. Now Chen's husband, Yang, was Chen's coach when she was a student. Coach Yang began a weightlifting club at Tainan Municipal Danei Junior High School because he wanted to give the disadvantaged students who didn't love learning a new focus in life. Chen was among the first class of students he taught. Coming from disadvantaged families, if they don't get help to change for the better, then they will remain trapped by their circumstances. Looking to give these athletes a sense of stability, the husband and wife pair often provide the students with a place to live, something to eat, and a caring ear. My husband tells me it's only six years, but once these children have the right mindset, then we have given them a fishing rod to fish for themselves. Here, the students learn how to work hard. It's something that will stay with them when they enter society. Training under the bright sun, these athletes have their eyes firmly set on their goal. And with the help of Coach Yang and Chen, they are learning to grow up right despite adversities in their life. At the end of the show, we follow six students and their teacher from Tsijing University as they go to a city kindergarten in Penang, Malaysia for an internship. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching Dao Headlines. Goodbye.